Everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you're having a great Sunday, and I hope you're going to have a great Thanksgiving. Hey, Amen. This is the time to get thanks to what God has done, has brought us through, has blessed us with. Amen. This is the time. This is the season of Thanksgiving. And I'll just remember, give glory to God for those things that he has brought us through. That's where the blessing comes from, is to continue to believe and trust in God that he brings us through day by day, year by year. And the blessings of being able to have fellowship with uh, our fellow man, our family members and friends throughout the year. And, you know, even if some of them have gone on with the Lord, it was a blessing to have fellowship with them, to have a relationship with them. Amen. And knowing that they're going home to the Lord and you'll see them again. And one of the things we brought on the study today was the fact is that and in, in, in those who have gone home with the Lord, they no longer operate in the same time we're operating in. They, they, to us, is 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 uh, a, a, a past, present, and future, uh, rising of the sun, going down into the sun. That that's how we use a reference time. We just remember that in eternal life, they, they, there's no reference of the sun going down or or, or go, rotation of the earth. We're talking about the heaven and universe, right? So time is different and it's not, it's not as relevant to to them as it is to us. So but the blessing is that we had an opportunity to get to know them. Now, what I want to talk about as, as, we, as we move into and get ready for the Thanksgiving uh, holiday, I want to make sure you remember something. What we talked about today, Sunday, was about not allowing people to create a narrative or a negative narrative for your life. And what I mean is people can say all kinds of things to you, but you need to recognize that the only narrative that you have to receive is the narrative that God has given you. Hey man, I mean, that's a blessing by itself when you think about it. What does God say about me? How do I stir myself up about who I am? I do it by recognizing what he has said. Because I guarantee you, in life, there's people who have a uh, who are willing, eager to create a narrative concerning who you are or a reputation of who you are. I mean, we talk about even the, when you go out back from the things even with racism and stuff like that. The fact is that people create a narrative to justify their actions towards you. Even though I when I talked a couple of weeks ago is who gave you the license to hate? The bottom line is that when people try to do things to you, they create a narrative that allows them to justify their actions. And what I'm trying to tell you today is don't allow and let people know whether they like it or not. I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I'm more than conquered through him who loves me. In other words, I am more than what you want to perceive me to be. I am not going to accept what you say I am. I'm going to accept what he says I am. That's why it's so important for you to know the word of God, study the word of God, and understand there's a mind game that goes on that people try to put you in a box. God is saying you're not in a box. You're my child. And he is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the God Almighty, and he loves us. Amen? So watch out for that when people try to give that type of narrative about you. Because it's not about what they think. It's not about what they feel. It's not about what they perceive. It's what God perceives. Crypto said many times, don't, don't look at the outward appearance, but look at the heart. Because that's what he looks at. And that's what you need to understand. I am a child of God because he says I am. And we're going to go over uh, the, the scriptures, identify what God says we are. And that's more important than anything else is what, what God says. Amen? So what we're going to do, and that's one of my little indicators. Get this out of the way, too. I ain't got time for you. I don't know who you are. Hey, Hallelujah. <laughs> 
But let's go ahead and share what the uh, subject is uh, today. It's, it's, it, and I, I put it up here. It says, what does God say that you are, right? Because that's more important than anything else, right? What does God say? Because as long as we focus on what God says, I guarantee you, man, God is trying to encourage you. God is trying to build you up. God is letting you know that if you with him, he protects you. Amen. It's a reputation of what God says, right? That's why I even want to put the, 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 the on my slide here. You see, what does God say that you are? And, and the, the side one always said, making sense and understanding God's word in his kingdom. Amen. And, and, and Nehemiah 8, verse 8 says, so they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's what we want to do. Understand the reading of how we're supposed to operate in the kingdom of God. Woo, man, it's so important. This is probably one of the most important scriptures that, uh, or study that you can have. I'm pretty sure that God gives a revelation. A whole bunch of other things are, are important. But this one I really want you to do. Because I want you to say, you know, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And sometimes we have faith in what we hear from other people who created nothing. Huh? Or, or even sometimes yourself putting a negative connotation of yourself. And God is saying, no, I want you to listen, study, meditate, fellowship with me, and listen to what I say who you are. You know, I like Romans 12, 2, it says that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, we're being transformed to the image of his dear son. See, because we're children of God. Amen? So think about that as we get into this study. What does God say that you are? And understand what people say that you are is not what you have to have faith in, but have faith in God. Amen. So once again, happy Thanksgiving. Let's move into this week and let's get into the word of God. That's what we talked about today. And I want to just uh, do more like a, a, a synopsis of it for you. Amen. All right. So one of the things is that just like, uh, just like you, just like me, they tried to give Jesus a narrative. And, and, and Jesus wants you to know that don't get wrapped up and tied up and tangled up on what people say who you are. And understand that you want to receive the revelation from God of who you are, amen? But here's a good example. This is Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am. And what you have to notice that is he clearly gave a distinction of knowing that I know who I am. I, the son of man. But who do men say that I am? He's clearly destroyed how people will say one thing, what God is, is, is telling you who you are. You need to identify yourself as to who you are in him. Amen? In verse 14, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood, listen what he said. For flesh and blood, listen what he said. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I'm telling you that God is saying the same thing to us, that the word of God, no matter what people want to say, is inspired by God. And what God says is where you get your blessing from. And God the Father has revealed to us through his word who we are. <laughs> Amen. The bottom line is that 
there's people going to call you and identify you as different things, but you must always recognize that you are who you are. You know, I was sitting there even talking about from the, from, 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 even from all that stuff of racism and stuff. You ever remember how people used to have signs that said, I'm a man, huh? Well, people were trying to make you something else. I remember even that, even with the, the uh, opening of the 2016 election and when it was talking about uh, then President Trump uh, saying that these people coming from South America are rapists and murderers and, and thieves and, 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 and all those negative things. And, and some, and there are some that are good, which implies that the majority of them are bad people. And, and, and that's the narrative that was pushed on the American people. And what I'm telling you, and that's what some of the American people wanted to hear. But I'm telling you, what does God say about people? Because that's what those people are, according to the eyes of God, children of God. Now, somebody can sit and say, well, how do you know all Christians? That's not the point I'm trying to say. That could have that either been you that's coming from South America. Don't tell me. That could be used in this country. You could be a black man. You could be a white man. And I, everybody could sit there and try to give a narrative about you. And you got to sit there and say, what does God say about me? Because that's the only thing that matters. And even Jesus said there when he said in verse 13, whom do men say that I, and listen, I, the son of man am. He's already telling you who he is. It's the people he's asking what they say. But I'm telling you who I am already, just in case you don't know. Amen. And then Peter said, thou art the Christ. See verse 16, the son of the living God. Then Jesus answered and said, and blessed art thou, Simon of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but God, but my Father, which is in heaven. And you know, one of the things I do want to put in this too is always point toward God to Jesus Christ and recognize that people will try to identify you. But Jesus in this saying is, you got it right when you heard from God, amen? That's the same thing for us. Here's another one. Here's an example where, where they called, called Jesus the devil, right? This is in Luke eleven fourteen. And look, and, and it's funny, because it's funny, and it's, even when you're trying to do the right thing, doing the good things that God wants you to do, how the world will still try to say opposite. Luke eleven fourteen, 14, and when he was casting out a devil, it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. And some of them said he cast out devil through Beelzebub the chief of the devils and others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven but he knowing their thoughts said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house falleth. if satan also be divided against himself how shall his kingdom stand because you say that i cast out devil through beelzebub Verse 14, and when he was cast out of the devil, it was dumb, and it came to pass. Excuse me, I already got that. Uh, verse 18 is where we at. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devil through Beelzebub. But if Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, hallelujah, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man all keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor where he is trusted and divided his spoil. He that is not with me against me, and he that scatters not will be scattered. That's the whole point of this, brothers. And we've got to close out on this. And we'll come up on the next one. This is part eight of what we talk about. But the main thing, man, is this. 
People will try to get a narrative. That's why we're going to get down to you today. People want to get a narrative, a negative thing about you. I'm trying to tell you, don't let that happen. Believe God. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. So we'll come back on part uh, B, but we're going to go ahead with Elder Johnson. Let me see if I can. Uh, <laughs> Elder Johnson don't play, man. He he sit there and uh, I like I like how he put his music out there. But, you know he's going on with the Lord now, but he's a blessing. He's been a blessing to me anyway. Amen. All right, so we'll catch you. We go to phase uh, part B, and uh, I'll check you later. Amen. Amen. God bless. Bye bye. <laughs>